I apologize if I'm a little bit sick. I don't know how long that wait is going to last. If I need to call on everyone else here to help me out with the meeting. Um, just for time's sake, I'm going to ask, we're going to rearrange a little bit on the order of the um, agenda items, and we're going to discuss the uh, trash issue. And we have some gentlemen here from. Let's open up the public. Oh, sorry. Oh, I want to do public comment. We have to do it first. All right. Public comments first, then whoever's first on the list, you can come up to the podium. Please, please state your name and address. My name is Matt Barnhart, and my address is 460 Topahawk and Porter Road. That's right where the bridge goes from Marion Township into Heidelberg Township. It's also where a bridge goes from Marion Township into North Heidelberg Township. So I'm right at the crux of three township. And I have had the opportunity to talk to a couple of folks, um, neighbors across both bridges as to their service, the trash service. If uh, you wanna jump the, trip, the agenda, um, you may make my comments moot. Um, that's all up to you folks. Uh, I'll be happy to sit back and listen to what's uh, part of the agenda. No, you're, you're, you're entitled to report your opinion before we take any action. Well, I appreciate that. Um, when we moved to Marion Township um, about 30 years ago, three decades, um, my house was a derelict at the time. The tenant in the house was throwing trash down over the bank toward the creek. Uh, God knows how long uh, I had to hire a dumpster and a bobcat in order to clean it up. Uh, I'm still having dumping problems. Uh, just recently, somebody threw a roll of carpet off the bridge toward Ottawa Township that landed partway in the creek and partway out. I had to drag it out, cut it up with a chainsaw. Uh, Eagle Disposal picked it up after I cut it up. Um, Eagle Disposal hauled off a, a a sliding board from some sort of playset that washed down that I dragged out of the creek. And again, I had to cut it up, uh, but Eagle Disposal took it. Um, shortly after the carpet appeared, somebody threw a bag, a 30 gallon trash bag full of old Milwaukee cans uh, over the bridge. Thankfully, it landed on dry ground. It didn't land in the creek or there would have been Milwaukee cans from here to Blue Marsh. Uh, I had to put a ladder down a bridge abutment to get it, but I got it. Uh, I just threw that in the, in the trash. We had a number of problems with Eagle Disposal, uh, and I wanted to ask, I didn't come to the workshop because I wanted to ask the solicitor. I trust you are the solicitor. Mm -hmm. As far as these contracts are concerned, uh, are there performance standards in them? Yes, there are. So Eagle Disposal could have had the, the contract pull the plug at your, you could have pulled the plug of Eagle Disposal when they were making the news, they made Harrisburg news, they made Allentown news, uh, they made Lancaster news, WGAL. Um, you could have pulled the plug on them at that point. Well, I'm we, curious why that didn't happen. The, the, the board could have could have fined that trash hauler. You couldn't declare the agreement void in terms of potentially we could have. And that remains a, 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 a possibility with the contract that's in place now or is due to take place. So, so, so the, the, Eagle, today. the Eagle Disposal contract ends at the end of this month. The Mascara contract will start on April 1st. On April Fool's Day. I thought that was kind of I love that whole thing. Um, the, the questions that I had, um, uh, you had one bid, Correct. um, the bid document was posted, it looked like the beginning of February. Yes. Uh, could that not have been posted sooner than that? That's when the township decided to do it. I mean, we had but it could have been posted when Eagle was <laughs> in, in all fairness. I, 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 I guess it could have been Well, it seems like you painted yourselves into a corner and us with, okay. Uh, here's I, here's 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 something that I explained to the board. Okay, Marion Township is a rural community. It doesn't have a landfill in close proximity. So given given that and the fact that it doesn't have a bunch of residents, 
it's not a particularly attractive place for, for a trash hauler to come, okay? So there's a, there's a public process to follow under the second class township code. It's unfortunate that we only got one bid, but we're lucky we even got a bid. What would have, what would you have done if you hadn't gotten a bid? We would have rebid it. How? To follow the same process. There's a, there's a process to follow. The, the, town, the township prepares a request for a proposal. We publicly advertise that. It's it's posted online dependent. Okay. And, and we, we need, excuse me, let, let, let me finish explaining the talk. Process okay? okay, it's publicly advertised and then it's open for bid. Okay, anyone who's part of Penn bid all you know, every trash caller in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania can, can see that that RFP. Okay, then they decide whether they want to, and if they well, they do, then they do bid. The township reviews those bids to see if they're compliant with the RFP. If they are, we have we rank them. From the lowest, I, I, excuse, I, excuse me, let me, let me finish. Sure. Are you going to let me finish? Sure. Thank you. Okay, we rank them from the lowest for cost of bidder to the highest. Under the law, we are required, we are required to accept the lowest responsible bid. You can't renegotiate the bid. You can't reject the bid. You are required to take the lowest. Again, again we, we, we couldn't. We couldn't. Let, let, me, let me address your husband. Okay. Yeah, we could have rejected the bid, but you run the risk of an even higher price. That happens in, in, in a bunch of different places. Yes, when I, I've seen it happen before, where the, where the counter for the borough does not like the bid they get, and then it, it is increased. And Mr. G. Gennaro, who is the attorney for Mistero, I'm sure can talk to that point. So that's the public process to follow. Okay, and we follow that process. It's, yeah, I agree. It's, un it's unfortunate that we only got one bid. But it's because of the circumstance I just described that we can't control. We can't control that rural community. We can't control that we only three thousand residents. We spoke, can't control that the nearest landfill is twenty five miles away. I spoke with the solicitor with the Department of Community Economic Development, and he said you are permitted to solicit bids, which is exactly what we did. You can reach out to a contractor of choice, uh, so long as you no. open the bids, you advertise the bids, you give anybody else an opportunity to bid. So you so, can contact so, any so, so, so what you're proposing, you can contact so, any bid. So what you're proposing is is us is that the township reject the Macero bid and then personally contact all the you had got, If you had gotten a violation of law. If you had gotten no bids, you could have done that. Okay, but we got one bid. You could have rejected that bid. It says in your bid document you and, reserve the right to reject and, any bid that's not acceptable. And, and, if it was a five hundred dollar per quarter charge. That would have been an acceptable. I trust you would have rejected that bid. And respectfully, you could have showed up at the last meeting when when this was being decided. Okay, we're 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 beyond that point now because there was only it didn't bid. come up until the beginning of March. In February meeting, we acted to accept the only bid that we got. Okay, so there there's no going back now. We have accepted that bid. Tonight we are ratifying the execution of the contract. But you are it has been decided. Back. We're having trouble for months and months and months. And actually, the AG, I believe, fined Eagle in February for for poor performance and other. Right. And, that's, and that's and that's part of the reason why Eagle is exiting this area because they didn't do a good job. But they didn't. But but they didn't do the good job. Barnhart, of course, yes. Um, why a three-year contract when you don't know how this company is going to perform? And so a, a three-year contract is, again, it's standard in the industry. It ensures that the township locks in a price for three years. You get the, you get the, you get the benefit. It's more than of, double what the I, price is now. And I look at this contract. This contract is vastly different from the contract that we had with Eagle. And because of the problem no, that we had. The, the contract is not vastly different. The, the, haul, the, the hauler is different. Difference. Um, some of the provisions that we had in the bid requested assurances that we didn't have with Eagle. And so the bid itself was, excuse me, the bid itself was vastly different from what was put out for Eagle years ago. And so the assurances that we've gotten from this company are, are way different. And we have remedies that we can work with if there's a failure. You do have remedies. Because I'm going to go like, ahead and we, we, have have we have nothing. We have nothing. The old people, um, everything, it, there, was, there was nothing. There were very few remedies that we had. 
But this one we do have ground lease in place. You right. said you could have declared the, the contract void for non performance. For, no, it's, it's not. They, they weren't we doing don't, what we don't, they contracted to do. You could have done that last who fall. Who is going to come and visit yeah. your truck? Right. Well, that's another question. What happens to go back to letting people get their own hauler? I mean, right out in North Heidelberg, they're doing that. I could probably tack my property on to numerous ones out there. And I've checked, I've checked not with 100 people, but I've checked around with a few people I know. This is way more. A private, a private hauler across the downstream bridge from my house is charging $90 a foot. No, wait. The person I talked to it was sixty some dollars for two months. Oh, that's ninety dollars yeah. a quarter. This was pending. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so then my question is, why didn't you bid on pending? That's, that's my question to you. Maybe they would have if the timing had been different. They had. They had a month. Maybe to... they. Maybe they had taken on more content. Is there a stipulation in pending that you posted and it's got to be open in you know, a month, it's four weeks? It's publicly advertised. Right, so in the ready needle, which has no circulation, and the merchandiser is not out. See, legislator, but legislator, but changing the law that we follow the lawful process. We talked to, we talked to an attorney from the DCED. I talked to the director of the Department of Community or okay. local government, Albright. You could have sought any legitimate trash hauler in the in the area. There's a there's a company over here in Newmanstown. Uh, they would have been on it. Uh, they didn't even get it in. They would have. I talked to them. Well, they might. Uh, they're they're contracted with Hattelberg at this point. It's seventy dollars a quarter in Hattelberg. Now it was pointed out to me that that's not apples or apple cores and orange peels uh, because I don't know the length of that contract. That might be coming up, and it might go through the roof, mm -hmm. that's certainly a possibility. Correct, correct. Uh, but you could have been a little more proactive. When the when the trash ordinance was adopted, I was in favor of it because of the circumstance I described to the people dumping uh, on my property, adjacent property, uh, I was in favor of it because I thought that the township would negotiate on my behalf uh, to get me the best rate possible. And that doesn't seem to be what you guys did. And if I may, um, JP Mascara is here tonight, and they've also signed up for public comment. And I can offer also to jump to the agenda. No, 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 jump agenda, right? But that we, that you can, we can also direct some questions, and hopefully, when they talk, we can also work through some of these questions together. But I'm just putting another that. question. I would suggest you ask the gentleman from Mascara. I trust that's you, sir. Uh, another question I would suggest you ask the escalator clause is an index to any. It, it goes up every year for three years. Right, the bid, the bid price. But it's not indexed. Anymore. What's the basis for that? The basis is going to fall up. You don't know what your costs are going to be in. Yes, we have an estimate what they are based upon. We've been doing this for 50 years. It's warm and it goes up. That's a new okay, we're going to. You're changing your rate. I, I thank you for your public comments. We respect them. We nobody is nobody's happy that nobody's happy that trash prices are going six, are going you know up by 50, 60 percent. But it's more than double. That's I I I look, you're preaching the choir. No, nobody here is happy about it, but it's the way of the world. I mean, well, I just reason. I just wanted I just went up and could have done a better job on our bank. No, uh, like I said, that was the reason I supported the trash ordinance. How long ago was that ordinance adopted? It, it had to be 15, 20 years ago. What if the ordinance is repealed? You guys could sit there and say, I'm, we're done with that. We're not going to, we're going to repeal the ordinance. Are you bound by a contract? Yes. Yes. An ordinance that doesn't exist anymore? An yes. Is we're bound. Thank you. Sign a binding agreement with you, Sarah, that we must honor for at least three years. So we must honor. Thank you. Mr. DeGeneres, public comment. <laughs> you can provide on the state over here, so I don't have my back. Well, um, yeah, just the end of the reporting process. My name is Alan Ginger, and I'm Deputy General Counsel for JP Mascara. Although I'm a lawyer by trade, I've been with the company over 33 years, so I'm involved as much in the business aspects as I am in the legal. And I want to introduce the two gentlemen that will be responsible for servicing this contract, two long term guy employees. This is our general manager, Mike Guido. Mike oversees our Burns uh, division 
and his operations manager, his brother Dave Martin, as these two gentlemen would oversee the service there. Uh, I want to talk to you about three areas, I think, and hopefully answer some of the questions. And I'm happy to answer any questions I have to, that are thrown to me. If I don't know the answers, I'll get them to you. I'd like to think I know an awful lot about it, but I'm not, I'm not perfect. Um, I've been with the company 33 years, and I can tell you that in those 33 years, the most challenging time in our company and in our industry was in the pandemic that threw everything upside down. And what do I mean by that? First of all, we couldn't have a police show up for work every day. It was a struggle. And I can talk on and on and on about how the pandemic turned our business up. But what I want to tell you is that set a new blueprint for what's going on in our industry right now. Companies are very challenged to serve their existing customers. We were here uh, three or five years ago and not the low bidder. And we certainly wanted the contract, but Eagle had submitted a low bid and they were getting the contract. And you saw what you got with Eagle. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman is talking about all the all the debris and, lit and litter that's being thrown. The two most important things in the community, everywhere I've gone for these 33 plus years, people talk about safety. Is you want to have clean streets, you want to have a clean community. Obviously, you were proactive. You enacted an ordinance that required you to have a township by hall. Why do that? Because otherwise, there's no way you could be assured that your township governments will be disposing of waste in the proper way. Sure, I'm not suggesting you have a bunch of lawless citizens, but people take trash to work, people run across the street and throw somebody else to come there. People take the sheets and put it in the dumpster there. You'd be surprised what we've seen over the 35 years from people trying to get around and pay their fair share. So, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, you, you went out the bid. And I think I never opened the paper to figure out where a bid is. All of us in our industry are subscribing these services that are big collecting services. And everybody that collects trash that's worth the dime will be on that list and they will see. So, no one had to read the Red and Evil. Uh, we all know paper and subscription are going down by the wayside. Any hollow that wanted to bid on this, that would have subscribed to that service, would have known about it. And if they don't subscribe to that service, frankly, that might be an indication to me that they're not really big enough to be able to do it because you have financial requirements and financial uh, things in your bid to make sure that they're performing on the spot. But let me just, I just want to give the residents an idea. And honestly, I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence because if you go to a grocery store, if you buy gas, you go to Walmart, you go anywhere, you've seen how prices have gone up. But just to give you an idea, uh, in my letter to you, uh, when I was talking about why uh, costs are what they were, since 2020, uh, these costs have skyrocketed in the industry. And these are particularly what our increases have had. Uh, interest rates, the cost of borrowing money has gone up 165%. Wages, we had to increase wages 65%. Had to be because we valued our employees and we needed to do that to get them to show up. Because during the pandemic, people weren't coming to work for too many reasons, uh, aside from health and real uh, 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 issues. People just felt they could sign up for something, collect, and not come to work and make more money off of some of the government handouts than what they would get coming to work. Our equipment costs, our trucks, it takes a year and a half to get a truck from the time you put the order in. The truck costs went from about $250,000 to $275,000 to over $350,000. The equipment has gone up over 35%. The fuel, we all see what the diesel fuels uh, between four or five dollars a gallon. Uh, repair costs are over 50%. Insurance costs, what we have to pay for insurance. I'm sure all your residents have seen it in their homeowners' costs and in their automobile liability costs. Our costs have gone up 35% in insurance. Um, recycling, uh, things change in the recycling market. We don't think it's permanent, but it changed in the short term. China stopped accepting plastics. With people staying at home, people are generating a lot more recyclable materials. The supply became greater in demand, so now we have this problem of handling recyclables. We spent six, $16 million on a new recycling plant. Everyone, your recyclable materials will be taking that plant down the road right outside of Birdsboro. But it costs now, it costs more to handle those because they're not a readily available market. We still recycle everything. Plastics one through seven, cardboard, aluminum, everything, glass. Uh, and lastly, disposal. And any bid, Disposal, the landfill, your sister may mention that. That's probably about 35 to 40% of the bid price is disposal. And there's a lot of there's a lot of hollows that don't have long-term access to disposal. And those costs are expensive. So for somebody to come in and bid this cost, bid this contract for three years, they need to make sure that they get a performance bond, which requires they have necessary financial security. They need to make sure they have an ability to figure out what their costs are because I can assure you when we figured out our costs in 2019, we didn't count the pandemic. We were losing money on contracts. We honored those contracts every one of them through its, through its completion. 
disposal cost, there's a, there's been a disposal, when I started in the company 35 years ago, there were over 500 landfills. Now there's about 50, 45 to 50. There's less and less disposal capacity. And in, in, the, in the not too distant future, we anticipate there's going to be disposal crunch when there's not enough landfills because no one wants a landfill. Uh, I'm sure you can understand that. So those costs are, are, are what were reflected in, in the bid. I used to get a cup of coffee at Walmart for $1.50. Now it's $2.48. I used to get a hoagie for $3. Now it's six, now it's six dollars. Uh, all those things, everything that every day consumer sees has been magnified in our industry. And what's also magnified in our industry is the ability to not take on new work. Very few companies are able to take on new work. Why are we different? We're not a national public company. We can't compete with waste management throughout the country. We don't compete with waste management throughout the country. The green trucks. The same with the blue trucks. Ready? They have a landfill. I'm sorry, be a lot. But in Berks County, nobody can beat us. We have the best infrastructure in Berks County because we have a Holly Division in Reading, right outside of Reading and Exeter Township. We have a million dollar recycling plant right outside of Reading and Exeter Township, and we have a disposal site. So we are, we are, and we are situation in such a such a favorable way that that's the reason why we have more contracts than any other single hour already in in the, in, the, in the Berks County area. I talked about I talked about the cost, uh, and and I'll, I'll leave some of these here for out because they're they're real cost. Uh, you all saw them. I want your residents to see this because I understand that it's you know it's, it's hard earned money and and people have fixed incomes, but it's a it's a fact of life as what's gone on. As as to sh as to as to show you that you did your due diligence, you advertised. Trust me, anybody that wanted to bid on this contract could have bid on it. I, I submit to you they didn't bid on it for one or two reasons. Number one, they didn't bid on it because they couldn't have the ability to take on new work. Wait, Spade, it's a fifteen billion dollar company, one of the largest in the world. They didn't bid on this contract. You think they knew about this contract? I'm sure you knew about this contract because they subscribe to the same service we do. Republic, a twelve billion dollar public company, has a landfill in. Um, in um, uh, New Morgan. I went to, I, I've gone to meetings where they would be incumbent holler from three and five years ago, they didn't bid. If, if we've got 10 contracts in Birch County in the last 12 months, 18 months, at least six of them were a single bid, no other bidder. Why? No different than Marion Township because it's a very challenging time in our industry with all these unknown costs and no one has the infrastructure in Birch County. I'm not saying what we're doing in First County, we can do somewhere else in the state. No, our bread and butter is really east of Susquehanna, and we're strategically situated to, to be really competitive here. But I want to give you some examples. Marion Township, the calculations I have still went up 122%. Exeter Township, recycling home, their costs went up 77%. What's the difference in Exeter Township? Our landfill is right there, our recycling center right there. We got to drive 40 minutes to get out of here. I don't know what trash caller is closer than we are around here. But I guarantee you one thing, we leave our depot right next to the landfill come out here, we drive back and we can dump. Someone else wants to build this, has to come into the township, has to figure out where they're going to dispose their waste, drive all the way back. It's not cost effective for them, and that's why this isn't an attractive job. And you see what happened with eating. You see how it's got a certain safety problem. God knows where they've been taking your trash. But your trash under our landfill will go to the Pioneer Crossing landfill. It's one of the most uh, environmentally sound landfills in the state. If you call the BDG and tell you it's a, it's one of the signature landfills, they're very pleased with our environmental compliance record. We haven't had a notice of violation over 10 years. It's a small landfill, and it's a landfill that serves us, sort of local communities. We have many communities in, Red, in the Reading area and in Berks County that we don't collect our trash, but their hollers bring the trash to our landfill because it's strategically located. Uh, Amity Township, recycling contract only. Uh, awarded to us the end of uh, 2022 went up 134 percent. We were the only bidder. Exeter Township, I just mentioned, we were the only bidder. I've heard the same cries from people in the community. Why no other bidders? Same answer. Maiden Creek Township went up 121 percent. Shillington Borough went up 104 percent. West uh, Borough, why missing? Went up 182 percent. We were the only bidder. Why missing? West Cosgrove, I asked someone to give me only Montgomery, only Bucks birth, but they gave me West Cosgrove. That's just on the edge. That went up 146%, and we were the only year there. So that, that's the state of the industry. And honestly, you have a blue chip company. There's nobody better situated to provide you with the service in your time. It'll be like night and day. We're the Rolls Royce in, in comparison to what you have. You won't have to worry about our service. You have two guys here 
when you write your check and pay after when your residence pass, it doesn't go to some place in Arizona like waste management or Houston, Texas, like the public. It comes right down the road in Montgomery County because we're a local business and we employ local people. We have a significant workforce from, from the township. As to your particular, as to your particular price, it's gone up. There's no denial. I'm not going to deny it. It's gone up. And and you know, we we and most of these contracts that I re recited for you were five-year contracts. Most communities want to go with a five-year contract. It's it's fine for a guy that says, I want to bid on this and I'll charge you seventy dollars and each month a month. And his trash and his disclosure rates go up in the next month and send a new bill. The reason why you go with a municipal wide bid solicitation is you lock in on your price. So you can budget and you can prepare for the next three years. You know what your costs are. And we can't charge in three years what our price is today because our costs are going to continue to go up. So we have to we have to uh, estimate you know what normally we think will be the increases, not what the crazy increases were up to now. But we can't. Well, when we bid on this job, we give you a price of 2024. We can't give you the same price of 2026 to 2022. You know, in, in place that was skyrocketing, we don't think it's going to be like that. But we had we had to we had to factor in the price. I was asked to come and, and, and answer three questions. First question was, residents don't believe the towns have been enough to encourage bidders. I, I, I can assure you, anybody that wanted to bid on this contract knew about it. And for somebody to tell you now, oh, I wanted to bid on this. And I, I will I will say for the record, the town did have enough time to, to reject all bids and rebid if it desired. It did not do that because we didn't want to risk a further pricing. Yes. You know, we I've seen situations where the only ones bid they put the bid out and they wouldn't get it, and they wish they didn't throw the bid out. So you, you certainly uh I don't care whether you went out to bid six months ago or six weeks ago, the prices have continued to escalate, and you you have not done yourself any any better service by going out long, uh three three months ago versus fifth last month. Frankly, that's the norm. Usually to usually six, eight, ten weeks out. You know, if you go if you go too far out, then the contractor has to think, well, now I'm looking at I'm looking at this back in July, it's gonna take effect in January. And I gotta maybe maybe I have to speculate a little more, figure out how much more I want to figure because I'm not sure. So I, I don't believe, and I'm not I'm not here to defend the township, other than I think they awarded it to the to the best contractor that they're ever have here. But I, I respectfully say that there wasn't anything else you could have done. Uh residents are concerned about the civic and increase of senior population. Well, there's a senior discount. But but mind you, I want to make sure people understand that senior discount doesn't eliminate the cost for the recycling. So if, if when you start adding up the bags, I'm not sure how much cheaper that is. I mean, there's some discount to it, but but and you, you have to buy them in lots. You have of, to buy them lots of five, five. Five. So and if eight dollars every five, you're spending forty dollars. Spend forty dollars, and and the recycling the recycling charge is, is different than the trash charge. But you add them both up, if you use too many bags. It's better to go with the non, non lower thing. And the third question was residents asked the supervisor to actively find ways to reduce pricing. Well, the way the public bidding system works, and you're supposed to roll the premises, you said you put out a set of bid specs. And under law, those bid specs are mandatory, and the bidders have to follow it. They have to follow it to be, and your solicitor said, the lowest responsible bidder. But once you put those specs out, you can't change the term of the contract. I can't say to you, well, we'll give this person a discount, we'll do that. The only discounts we were allowed to give is what your specs ask for, 2% for prepayment. There can't be there can't be any change in the service we're providing as to what you advertise, because otherwise where you're violating the public bidding law, you can't make the change. The only change you could make, and it's not it's not just give anybody, it wouldn't give us an unfair advantage, it wouldn't give you an unfair advantage. Is I think someone asked about well, what if the township did the bill? And 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 we said we sent you one bill. And I had my accountants because we've been asked to do that. People think it's a lot. This is going to be a big price difference. It's not. It'd be twenty-four dollars a month less. So if you want us to send you one bill, and you bill the residents. Our price we factored in to be about twenty-four dollars per year. It's important to understand that there, we 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 the township understood that if we build for the service, it would be it would be significantly less. But we didn't put that in, in our specs because we don't have the capacity to do that. We only have one employee. We don't. We don't have the ability to send out bills for five hundred people a quarter. We just. We don't. Please continue. So, in, in a nutshell, I, I don't know if that 
It's going to satisfy people, but it's the honest, legitimate answer. That's what we're going to You only got one bid. Why you got the cost that you got, and why you can't change. Uh, um, you advertised and you wanted a contact, and I can assure you that you will have you won't have any problem with the service uh, under our company. We're not perfect. Does that mean we won't have a miss? No, we may have a miss, but we have a supervisor that will be in your township every time our truck's been here collecting, and we have a standard procedure that before the truck leaves the township or before the supervisor leaves the township, there's a call made to the office and say, do you have any complaints? Are there any misses? We try to get them before we leave. We don't get them before we leave, and it calls them in. We get them in the next day. You won't have what you have with, with Eagle or Traffic City and her. This is a family business, and the family name is on the side of the truck. They take great pride in the service they provide. Pandemic threw everybody upside down. They've never really had that kind of situation. And we took steps to make sure we're better situated now than we were before the pandemic. Costs us a lot more money. And unfortunately, we operate on cost plus profit. And, and, that, and honestly, our profit here is a fair profit. We're not gouging anybody. The fair indication of what these other prices are. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. And, uh, I'll answer any questions you have. Before before we take any action with respect to this matter, does anyone in the audience have any other public comments on the track contract or questions for Mr. Pigenaro? If so, please come up, state your name, address, or make a comment. Albert Veronio, 55 Main Street, Sideburg. When this track business, feel sorry about the track going up all over the place and everything. Blame the devil's best for that. First of all, people can't afford this big double digit uh, for the track. I want to say to you about the track. Why we were paying 72, 73? I went around and checked around and around like like Stonecroft, Wilmersdorf, in the area, even up here, TNT, none came close to the to that number. None. I don't I don't know when those contracts began. Huh? I don't I don't know when those contracts began. They could have begin began before the pandemic. Would anybody call at different places? <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand the question. I don't understand the question. The question is: anybody call a different company for 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 a, a, a number? I I just told Mr. Barnhart that we can't do that. Why not? Because the law doesn't allow it. It does allow. It. The law does not allow. It. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what someone from the DECD told you. The law does not allow it. Okay, and we're going to get sued by Masaro if we reject their bid. I'm not going to get sued down by the conference. I'm not suggesting you reject the bid at this point. My concern is he addressed it. No, I'm saying if, if we had excuse me, if we had rejected the bid at the last month's meeting and then individually contacted other contractors, Ms. Sarah would have sued us because they were the lowest responsible bidder. That's what would have happened. We are not permitted to go individually solicit others to make bids. We put it out publicly to advertise. It was on pen bid. As Mr. DeGenero said, anyone who wanted to bid on it couldn't. There are there are Circumstances here that make trash hauling in this township difficult and unique. That's why we only got one bid. It is I I hear I hear everyone's concerns about the about the price. It's not something the board can control can control. When I moved here in 1985, okay, the supervisor we had here, when something happened, they want to do something, they send a fire to every every house. That's all gone. People don't know what they are. They're counter or going. They don't know. The last meeting we had done at, at, the, at the school. You know how many people knew that the meeting was there? Three. About the school. And about 125 people showed up. Yeah. So, so why, why, why was it only three people now? Huh? But only three people knew about it? Only three people. I talked to them. Did you know about the meeting? You talked talk, talk to 120 people and told them about the meeting? Huh? You talked to 120 people and told them about the meeting? I didn't talk to 120 people, but 120 some people got the the, the, the flyers that myself and, and uh, my neighbor we put out so people know what's going on. Do you have, do you have any other questions with respect to the crash bed? If not, we're going to move on. Do you have any other questions about the crash bed? I, look, I, I, I hear you on the price. I, I do. It is what it is. So, 
So now it's 161. A month? No. A quarter? It's a quarter. A month. Don't cut me off short because now there was people here, but I have an hour. Okay. The, the, the regular service, regular service by quarter is $111.90 for track, $201.72. Yeah. 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 So it's probably $162 a quarter. Okay. Next quarter, what's going to go up to? Every quarter, the whole year. Same the price is actually the same for the three years of the time. That's eight. That's on average. If you're prepaid, you can say 3.5%. We got to do better than that. That's how you do better than that. The next year, you can have more than that. The next year, you can charge people that would get to pay the game. And then they know it. You got EAT, they know nothing. I said, what's the score? I'm sure it takes more than that. No, I don't want to go. Well, this is, this you is got is to go to the office. Why don't they make the phone calls? Go well, these people here and get a bid. Not just go for one, one bid and talk to them. Oh, one more thing about the snow rock. They found the snow in the alley and took half the money back to the so whoever did the alley, I wanted to go back and fix it. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, please continue. Whoever dug up the back of my yard, I want them to come back and fix it. Here, it's still like you have the snow. I got pictures taken. I mean, they don't know how to pick up the plow and snow and pull it, pull it away from people that got the cars parked there. They want everybody to move the cars when the snow came. Everybody moved it. You know where the plow? Right there by the white line. Yeah, that's where they stop. So why move the cars? Why go through that malarkey and move the cars? <laughs> I'm not going to lose how they smell. So you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's Right, right. That, that's the right for you. Yeah. Well, for not having, well, for not having the okay. Just, 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 okay. just to add to what Al saying, the, the meetings haven't changed. Um, the workshop meetings are still on Saturdays, the week before the Thursday. Um, yeah, before the yeah, Thursday meeting. So for those of you that feel that you're uninformed, as far as I know, the meeting times have not changed. The meeting dates are always posted. You can always call into the office to see when the meetings are. So if anyone feels like they're missing out on any issues, they've all been discussed at the meeting as well as posted on YouTube. So if anyone needs to catch up on anything, feel free to watch it. If there are any other public comments or questions on um, the track, then I think at this point, the board is going to entertain a motion to ratify the execution of the notice of award and the contract for tracking and cycling services with the data. Do we have that motion? Almost. Do we need a motion for 28 and 29? Because we just have one written down for 29. Do we need to be the motion for this one? I have it as one seven. So I don't know what we need to do. So there's a lot of other stuff. I need a new one. So what this is under 29. Okay. So the the, <laughs> the the motion of the board is a motion to ratify the execution of the notice of award and the trash and recycling contract with Nisarro for a three-year term with two options. Uh, <clears throat> there's been a, a motion and a second to get a vote on that. Irene. Yeah, Lisa has to. Who seconded it? I'm sorry. I seconded Jesse made the motion. Okay. Roll call. I. I. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank, thank you so much for your time. Jose, you got my number, so you can contact me.
this office typically closes around 2 30. So thank you. So we seem to have around with the agenda for the sake of, uh, of um, uh, J.P. Mascaro and their council to see a return to the agenda as we proceed on further. Thank you. Uh, I have to apologize. I have not received any of the meeting uh, minutes from the prior uh, workshops, any of the other meetings. I have not. I have not seen them, so I'm going to, and it's just uh, Jesse and I, so I have not reviewed them. So then we will table this for the next meeting, and I apologize for anyone's inconvenience. So are you okay with that? Okay. All right. Uh, treasurer's report. Um, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I brought my head in a fog because I'm not feeling well, and I apologize. Um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping issues. We seem to have like a weird uh, occurrence on our money market account for liquid fuels. I got that straight out of the bank. It was a error on their part. Um, and a thing of, of more of a clerical thing just to kind of um, have to discuss with you and Peter. Uh, QuickBooks is changing their policies. So we have the option of buying the newest package for 2024, which is different from the previous Things usually we buy the license and it would be good for a couple of years. Now what they're telling me you have to buy the license plus um, I think it was $540, something like that, a year for an annual subscription. And I was like, what? The other option is keeping the version that we have, but if there's any defects or problems with it, we can't do anything with it. The other option is going for an online version, which would cost us anywhere between $30 to $45 a month. I've worked with a with online versions in the past, and I wasn't a big fan of it, although they're assuring me that it's different. Um, I guess with Peter, it would be a little bit easier to have that discussion, but we did have an outside accountant that we worked with in the past, and I I, I wanted to get his input in it, plus there's a couple of just more kind of fun issues that I had about the program itself. So I think I'll table this for the next, um, for the next uh, meeting as Great. well. One of three of us discussed it, but I guess I, I, I'll take it for the next meeting because I need to ask permission to contact this outside accountant to see uh, about some of these little minor issues that we have with the program. I guess would be best served at the workshop meeting. Forgive me, I wasn't at the workshop meeting because I've been ill. I'll move on to the next agenda item, and that's the approval for the payment of bills for February and March. And that, that information is made available for the public to review. Um, I'll make the motion to approve the payment of the bills for both February and March. Also. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Okay. Next item for discussion is the Ulster Design Group. Well, before. Oh, I apologize. Any yeah. further public comments? Can you please come up to the podium. I, my apologies. <clears throat> I'll be free. My name is Heather Hanna, and I'm running for State House District 5. Your lovely township is in District 5. Um, I have a history here in this, this area. Um, some of you may recall um, the Teeter's Farm down over the bridge, past the gun club, <laughs> up around the bend. My husband and his children and myself used to have Thanksgiving dinners with them, and we miss them dearly. But every year for Thanksgiving, we drove through here. And so I'm pleased to be here tonight to just say that I am running for State House District 5. My goal is to learn stuff by going to all these township and borough meetings. And I have learned a lot so far. And this evening, I learned a lot about trash. And um, I just appreciate the opportunity. And I will pass my cards to your administrator. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please hang around for the rest of the because there's oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. No, I play a video. There's a lot of nice things. I'm no curious. We're going through these meetings pretty quickly. So, thank you. Anything further? Anyone else? Thank you. Next item is the Olson Design Group. Um, this was supposed to be a presentation of the new building. Uh, unfortunately, we um, we are one. We are not able to because Peter is not here to help us with. The computer, so we couldn't have a presentation. So again, that will be discussed at a future meeting. My, my apologies. 
Um, the next item is the DCED COVID-19 ARPA PA Multipurpose Community Facilities Grant Program. Uh, this is to adopt the resolution 2024-7, and this is for the proposed new building, but this has been changed a bit. So I'll ask Kimberly to come up to the podium to explain this. All right, so the DCED opportunity is due April 20th, and this will allow us to pursue design and planning of the multipurpose community facility. Um, I am working with Engineer Hess and Olson Design Studio to put together the proposed package, and the DCED opportunity does not require a match from the township. So you would not have to put forward any township funds, which makes it a really nice opportunity. It is made possible from the American Rescue Plan Act, the COVID-19 funding, and it is designated for um, this particular infrastructure. Um, the next agenda item is the, uh, the Senator Casey discretionary funding, FY2025. That was, is this, this was the meeting that I had with you via the phone. Yes, okay. so fiscal year 2025, this was traditionally called earmark funding. There's been a couple of names for it, but Senator Casey's office is supportive of Marion Township, applying on behalf again of design and planning for a traditional community center. I'm again remaining in discussion with the architect and engineer Hess okay. to put together that proposal. That grant application is also being supported by Representative Dan Muser. I contacted his office and they're putting their full support behind it. This one does have a required match component. We are a rural community, which puts us at the highest level of potential grant funding. The federal government, if awarded, would award 75% of our request, and the township would be responsible for up to 25% of that request. So did we shift gears on this when, with respect to not the entire award for a building, but in fact, for just the planning stages at this point? Okay. Correct. We're not including construction okay. because we are not far enough along. We don't have the final design site development plans that would enable us to prove a budget um, for this building. I will note that discretionary funding is highly scrutinized public spending. So the congressman will make sure that the project is initiated and follows through on every request and parameter. So what's, what's, what's the maximum authority provided for in the resolution? Um, the maximum is the $2 million. That's the grant threshold. We will be asking for less, significantly less than the grant threshold. And that was my further question to verify that the resolution still stands if we are requesting less. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I guess just to clarify, what we initially thought we could do is request the entire amount uh, up to the $2 million. After taking a step back and realizing there are other costs that really may not have been thoroughly examined, we said, uh-oh, and we put the brakes on, that we're not there yet. So we really have to take a step back. And although it was kind of nice to say, hey, this grant in our lap, let's go for it. We, we realize we're not really prepared to ask for that full $2 million. Right now, tentatively, the project that we're looking at is new building across the street. The, this ground would then become um, the garage and salt shed. Um, the total package would be about $4.5 million. The concept was, though, is to build a new building, leave the building up until that building is there so we can still function, so we wouldn't have to rent space. Uh, for public meeting purposes, um, and we we have at least so we have the facility move across the street. Then we can have this building uh, removed and then build the new garage facilities here. In reflecting upon some of the early work that had been done by the Olson Group, we realized there was a big lack when it came to stormwater management as as well as possible sewer hookups, et cetera. There was a lot that was lacking. Some of the other finer points I think were we didn't really inc include in his proposal that he, that he gave us renovation of the park, which is a big must in, in my book. Mm -hmm. um, we wanna be able to accommodate more athletics possibly. We have to have ADA access um, and um, other um, green opportunities such as solar, we need uh, some type of a, a generator system for the building if we're going to use it as evacuation point. So all these other little fine details, which we're kind of 
hold our breaths on because we got excited over this great opportunity. I think we're really included in that whole work of that we were initially given by Lena. Yeah. And I think that's so, it was yeah. really a preliminary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, none of those fears are ever traditionally included in right. that type of study that we conducted. So, we so have, this grant yeah. application will allow you the design yep. space to yep. create everything you need. And that figure that we presented is truly conceptual. We right. don't know the actual square footage or any of these requirements of the building, what it will ultimately be. So we're only going for design funding, which is significantly less yeah. than that the yeah. other person. And so hopefully we'll have a little bit of a better opportunity in that respect, yeah. as well as down the road being able to happen to other great opportunities and other funding opportunities. Um, you know, so I feel like we almost jumped the gun, but we didn't. We held back and thank you everyone who took a, a, a second look at it and said, hey, wait a minute, put the brakes on here. We need to really consider what we're doing rather than putting ourselves in an awkward position of not having enough money to actually go through. So thank you. Thank you, Chuck, and for your input on this too. Thank you so much, Kimberly. So thank you. Kimberly, one question. So, yes. so the DCED COVID-19 ARPA money. Yes. Are you still going to be making applications? Yes. We're going to be in communication with you and uh, also together because that allows us more time to put together documentation and additional yeah. design requests. So April 30th. Yes. So, so, so then really... April 20th. Okay. Oh, April 20th. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't print any of the gotcha. Yes. So, uh, but it was mentioned that that ARPA money would be used for the design and planning. I think your intention is the design and planning is under the discretionary funding from Senator Casey. And that's what we need further discussion upon is we are designating the portions that you're seeing in terms of Senator Casey and then what could be asked for from the COVID portion. Right. That's reasonable yeah. to complement what okay. we're requesting for the design. Yeah, because the, the discretionary funding 20.4 due to more. Yes, right? the 2020. So you're going to have, you're going to, the, the, my understanding that was going to be the design and planning funding. Yes. Okay. Because it, it was mentioned under the ARPA. It seems duplicative, but I only say that because I do not personally have the information yet from you at okay. Wilson Design Studio to separate or de designate which portion of this building is going for. Right. The, the, the resolutions give the township the authority to make applications for the grants for the design, planning, and or construction. Yeah, and up to the maximum we can fund these. So if you ask for less, you're, you're still covered by that. Yeah. So, so the language of both these resolutions, I'm going, I'm going to make a motion then. Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And thank you Chuck. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, Lisa, I'm going to make a motion to adopt Resolution 2024-7, which is the DCED COVID-19 ARPA Multi-Purpose Community Facility Program Grant. And that's a second. I'll second it. Yeah. All right. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next motion I'll make is to adopt the resolution 2024-8 which is the standard Casey discretionary funding for the year 2025. All right, next item for discussion is approving the spring 2024 newsletter for the website. Roll call, Irene. Thank you, you guys did a nice job on that too. So again, Everyone, please get over to our website. There's more and more information on it. And, and the ladies in the office are doing a fantastic job of keeping up with that. And I really appreciate the work. All right. Um, so we have the summer one out too that just got done today. So Excellent. It's, it's nice. It's nice. And I know everyone is maybe in the habit of getting mail, but mail costs a lot for us to go to printing and, and get a piece of mail costs a lot. So if you don't have access to a computer, you could always go over to the public library. Um, one of part of the plan of the new building is to be able to enable the public to have access to computers. So we're going to try in, in our um, meeting essentially to have a computer available for people to use if you can't get to a meeting or if you can't get to the library, whatever the circumstances, or you're not computer literate. Um, we're going to try to have a program that um, helps our residents uh, enable usage. That's part of some of what we're looking forward to on our grant application to 
So we're trying to work with one of our local high school students to help people with computer literacy in our community. So I'm hoping that's part of our program of our at our new uh, facility too. So uh, we also have text alerts available. Again, you could go onto our website and sign up for it. There should be a number of prompts that you could follow. If you have trouble with that, you can call over to the office and the ladies will help you with that as well. Because we do have um the uh, oh my gosh, my brain is dumping. I'm so sorry. Um when you get an alert, what's it called? Oh, my civic God. ready. Civic ready, yeah, but civic ready and, and, and we do put reminders out. Yeah. Do that same type of service. Thank you. All right. Are the community association events in that newsletter? Um, Valley put the summer one that's coming out. There are some new ones, yes. Okay. She just got it done today. Uh, the supervisors haven't had a chance to uh, review it yet. Okay. I can't. I can hand out the one that they just approved. But the ones the that have been today, they, they haven't approved of looked at it yet. So okay, well, we would appreciate. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. but I can tell you that uh, yeah, we did put yeah. some of the, the events on the the summer one. Yes, yeah, just contact me anytime and we can throw you in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next slide for discussion, and forgive me, Jesse, because I wasn't here for the workshop okay. meeting. Uh, sewage management programs, uh, the schedule and annual online maintenance meeting. Oh, 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 forgive me. Act 537, special study. Oh, we have to adopt the uh, resolution 2024 9. I thought that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution 2024 9, which is the Act 537 special study. And I will second that. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. I just hope we accept it. Um, I'm sorry, next item. Sewage management program, the scheduled annual online maintenance meeting for May 2024. What was the discussion at the workshop meeting on that? Forgive me. Um, there really wasn't much to say. And do you remember that? Yes, yes. So we are proposing the annual meeting for the online septic management program as part of the DEP requirements for a septic management program. Part of that requirement is to have annual education for all residents who own or operate an online system. It would essentially just be information on best practices for operating your system and keeping it um, operating well, essentially. Mm -hmm. So do's, don'ts, and um, as always, residents are welcome to ask questions about um, how we are observing the system for that matter. So it's a one night um, brief presentation that's open to the public as per DEP. So I guess, do you, do you recommend that we would do something similar for what we did for the town hall, renting a larger space so that more people could attend? That is up to your best recommendation. We could give Al some flyers, he could walk them around town. Yeah. Okay. It's going to help us. Why not? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll have to take that into consideration. I guess at the next meeting, we may as well um, have that discussion. He's going to do it for following the papers. Does the board want to make a motion? I want to make a motion. Well, for the present for the time, just to authorize Hydrocare's sending of another online management letter to the president. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll motion that. The meeting date. Yeah, we'll yeah. Yeah. All right. For next, for, for this year? Or do you want another meeting this year? For 2024. Yeah, 2025. And when do you propose to have that meeting? Theoretically, May, because the start of the growing season is when observations and is traditionally taking on the taking place. And that's the best time to evaluate your system. I don't know if we'd be able to secure. Well, we, we, we don't know the availability of our own schedules to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll have to we'll have to work through that if we need it. So we could authorize it to subject to coordination with township staff to get a date if they can send the letter. The letter yeah. has had as much advance there as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the You'd want to make a motion to, to send the letter and set a meeting date for that purpose um, on, on a date term to be determined. Okay. Do you got that, Lisa? Uh, yes. I think uh, I'm so started. Uh, so, just to make the motion, oh, you second it, roll call. For what Colin just said, I'll make that motion. Roll call, Irene. Fine. 
I'm so sorry, guys. I'm really not feeling well. Yeah, thanks, Street. It's okay. Too many cold medicines. Um, okay. Thank you, Kimberly, again. Our next item is the proposed short term rental ordinance. Attorney Farland would like the board to review some of the discretionary and legislative open end questions presented by the ordinance, enforcing the entire property maintenance code with specific sections when inspecting these units. Again, was this something that we had discussed at length during the um, uh, workshop meeting? Not at length. I think Peter has a question for Colin. Okay, and Peter, unfortunately, is not here. So I have got Colin's paperwork, and I have got some of the other um, uh, local, local municipalities' paperwork. I'll spread them out on the desk for you to review them so we can bring this again up for discussion for next meeting. Unless Peter Cogan is in front of us, you. He has, he has it, but my update for the board is I've the ordinance is a, in a final form that's ready to be um, approved for advertisement. The only the only question for the board and the only comment Peter had was whether we're going to set a, a minimum threshold for what for what constitutes a short term rental, right? Because you you, you can you can say you know any dwelling unit that's rented for less than thirty days is a short term rental. You could also say any dwelling unit that's rented at least three times in a year for under 30 days is a short-term rental. So the, the question is whether you want to set a, a floor for the order for, for uh, the applicability of the ordinance. Yeah. Right, but uh, of course, the, the, the higher you set that floor, the less people it regulates and covers. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the fine line to the wall. I've also prepared a resolution um, to be adopted at, at the same time the ordinance is enacted. And that resolution specifies the, the codes to be enforced under the ordinance and the fees to be paid, right? So there's a, there's a permit application fee and there's an inspection fee. And um, you know, the, the codes being enforced are the property maintenance code and the building code. And of course, you know, the fees can change and the property maintenance codes that the board has, the town of has, can change and so you want to delegate those to a resolution because a resolution is easier to adopt an ordinance or an amendment to an ordinance which needs to be added up. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are, those are the two documents there's really only one question for the board and that's you know where do you want to set that that floor uh for, for regulation and, and right now i have it as being three times in a year i think at one point it may have been five it's just a, a question for the board to decide. Okay. I think ultimately, if you get me that feedback okay. by next month's meeting, okay. we can be in a we can be in a place where this ordinance can be approved for advertisement and announcement at at the next meeting. At, okay. Not the next meeting, but at the meeting after next, which okay. would be this is the, the more meeting. It would be the main the main meeting. Okay. okay, that shouldn't be a problem. I I was I was extremely pleased with everything that you wrote up. I guess I want to understand Peter's concerns a little bit more before we go ahead and approve it. And and you know, only other thing I'll mention is that pursuant to the board's feedback, the short-term rental ordinance now does cover hotels and motels in the township. Excellent. Excellent. And then just um, piggybacking off of that topic, the long-term rental inspection ordinance is very similar to the short-term mm -hmm. rental inspection ordinance. It's just, you know, instead of the, the short-term rental definition is, you know. Any dwelling unit on a premises in township that's run for under 30 days. Well, the long term rental ordinance is, is simply any dwelling unit in on a premises in the township that's rented for more than 30 days. So they're going they're going to be very similar, um, which is the goal because application and enforcement mm -hmm. will be easier because you're not trying to decipher and interpret two mm -hmm. uh, different ordinances. Mm -hmm. And I, I recommend let's finish up the short term. So that connected hopefully at the May meeting, and then we'll just move on to the long term uh, rental ordinance and try to get that enacted by the end of summer. Okay, thank you. Thank you very, very much. So, I would just, I would just say for uh, Lisa, um, for next month's agenda, make sure that this matter for the short term rental ordinance notes the board's potential approval for advertisement. Okay, yeah. We'll just we'll just get Peter's feedback via email and have that forwarded to Colin, and then we can move forward. I mean, I was more than satisfied with the ordinance. Did I have any? I haven't even checked back in the Yeah. 
Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. We could we could do that during work meeting and have everything to go then. All right. So then I'm gonna move along because this column had just mentioned the proposed long-term rental inspection ordinance. We're gonna leave that for discussion for the next meeting. On the next item for discussion is 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway. Again, this is this is my update. Okay. Um, based upon the board's mm -hmm. motion at last month's meeting with mm -hmm. authorized well, the filing of yep. the administrator for criminal search warrant, I had reached out to Kraft and the Tupahawken Township solicitor okay. to start to obtain the information that was learned when Kraft and the police department responded to the emergency in December. Um, I'm still in the process of gathering some of that information. I, I don't want to I don't want to speak too much about the topic because it does concern uh, potential litigation and an ongoing investigation. So I will uh, discuss this matter further in executive session after the board's meeting, but no other action will be taken on this meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item for discussion is the Western Bridge Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendment. This is for the keeping of pets as small to domesticated farm animals. This meeting is in April, April 18th at 7 p.m. Heidelberg Township and Peter and Jesse will be attending. Okay. Excellent. Yay. I would just uh, motion to approve oh, their attendance okay. of the meeting. All right. I'm going to motion to approve uh, the attendance of Peter and Jesse to the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the Western Berks Joint. That I just said it already. I'm sorry. <laughs> On April 18th at 7 p.m. I'll send you Sorry. Well, I mean, Hi, Jesse. Hi. All right. Oh boy. The next item is the property maintenance issue at 660 Canal Road, which is owned by AT&T. Craft has sent the demolition order for the shed in August. Uh, Colin here has suggested sending one final letter to AT&T, and which have relocated the headquarters in New Jersey. And I guess he spoke to the property owners on either side, and so we're moving ahead with that. Right. So. Tonight, I would like the, the board to authorize the posting and mailing of a final demol demolition notice that'll be posted on the shed and will be sent to um, AT&T's corporate offices in New Jersey and their corporate national headquarters in Dallas, Texas. Okay, awesome. thank you. Jesse, wait for much. Roll call, Irene. Hi, Jesse. Hi. I, my apologies a thousand percent. I am just so. All right. Before we move on, I also want the board to take one more motion. Sure. So that's not the latest matter no. further because I know the board wants to address it. Um, I'd like a motion. So I, I prepared letters to be sent to the property, the adjoining property was at 663 mm -hmm. and 664 Canal Road. Okay. okay. That letter ex explains that obviously. We need the consent to enter their land mm -hmm. to not only inspect the shed, uh, but have a contractor give us a quote for it and then ultimately spray the shed and remove the contents from it. Um, I'd like the board to make a motion authorizing my sending or uh, Mr. Hess's uh, presentation of those letters to the two property owners contingent upon ATT not timely responding to our demolition notice. Okay. I'll make that motion then to send letters to the adjacent property owners at either Chuck's office or Collins' office can, 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 on at and not responding in a timely manner. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Thank you, Colin. Thank you again. All right, the next item is the proposed resolution for the municipal claim and taxing law. This is uh, recommended by Attorney McFarland to sure for Township can seek reimbursement for attorney fees when filing and pursuing a lien claim. It accomplishes this purpose by adopting a fee schedule for attorney's fees concerning legal services related to filing and pursuing those claims, which the municipal claim and tax lien law requires. So I'll make that motion to adopt the resolution for the municipal claim and tax lien law. I'll second. We'll call Irene. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Thank you. Yeah, I don't want to have to be doing that, but no, 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 no. Like, I know, I know. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. The topic doesn't take away yeah. lien, but to the extent we do, we yeah. obviously want to be reimbursed for our costs. Exactly. And the, the lien law yeah. requires that we have a fee schedule. Yep. 
for those attorneys fees that we're trying to recover. Absolutely. And as we've been working closely with your office now, um, I've been working, I've been throwing it in to Alicia monthly. So yep. for, for those yep. who see the signs up in, in the office, just let them know. If you're engaging in a project in the township, there may be additional legal and engineering costs associated with your projects. And um, so you may receive a letter from the township because we act as a house group when we get any um, things that come from engineering or legal services. So if you get a letter from us, it's a legit letter and the um, billing is attached to it. And you can always call either agency to verify that that billing is still legit. But everything that we're sent that we're sending to you is being sent over to call up staff as well. So and unfortunately the bill is not paid within a certain amount of time we can't take action for the lien against your property. So um all right. So that this is an important part of, of our functioning. All right, next item is Dutch Valley Foods. Uh there's a letter of credit for auto increase. The amount will increase from three hundred and eighty-one thousand one hundred and sixty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. To four hundred nineteen thousand two hundred eighty three dollars and sixty eight cents. The next item for discussion is the proposal for ag security for six hundred one Marion Drive. This is Phil and Julia Wise. The application um, is received. If we wait one hundred and eighty days, it will not incur any additional costs, and what is matter goes into ag security, and the applicant is willing to wait one hundred and eighty days. If we don't wait, if we don't wait one hundred and eighty days, you have to hold a hearing. To put the property in an ag security era, cut in the alternative, if you just wait 180 days by operating the law, the property enters the ASA. Okay. I don't think there's any problem there. Next item is the road maintenance. Um, this this is proposed by Peter to help uh, um, create a five year maintenance plan to get roads fixed and maintain the environment through the cycle, which includes cleaning up culverts. And it's Peter's intention to supply Valerie with a map. And I believe this is just, we've been discussing this for a while, uh, but as we're getting up to date with our technology and our reminders, we're, trying, we're getting more monthly schedule and keeping things on track. So kind of nice. There's no motion to be made here, is that correct? Yeah. No, no. no. All right, tree trimming. Uh, we're trying to get uh, quotes, but everyone keeps us on this with too far out. We push. You've taken the, the lead on that, correct? And valid too, I think. Mm -hmm. Next item is the Wintersville Road Culvert, 3820 Wintersville Road. This is starting to fail. Engineer test recommends a pipe replacement for the onset of roadway settlements. Chuck, are you able to update me a little bit on this here? Um, I think I, I think there was authorization given last month I to, so to proceed with uh, you know, engineering design. Yeah. I think we'll have to survey there a little bit and then getting permits for that work. And once that's in place, you know, whether we put it out to bid, because I'm assuming the township wouldn't self-perform that work. So um, other than that, I do not have any update on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we like to keep things on the agenda till they're over and done with. Yes, so. that's good reminders. Thank you. Next item are the 2024 road projects. Engineer has gave us estimates for Sheridan Road South from Wilmington Boulevard to Lebanon County for $326,445.90. Sheridan Road North from Wilmington Boulevard to School Road, $370,601.40. Doubtford Road, $901,484.09. And Winterville Road, $532,261.90 for a total of $2,130,793.29. We don't have that money. Uh, approval was to work on first with Sheridan Road South for William Penn Boulevard's 11 County, and I believe we did that last week. We did, and then I was kind of waiting for the meeting minutes because my, my notes were that the board also I thought we did wanted us to uh, evaluate uh, school road yeah, yeah. and Woods Drive yeah. for costs. And I think it, predominantly school road was possibly look with those costs, looking for a, a grant application for, I want to say, perhaps. 
At least that's what my notes were. Yeah, that was in the last meeting. I remember they were talking about Woods Road. Yeah. Yeah. So I will get on that okay. um, both school road evaluation. And we're starting from where the reconstruction ended and going over the rest of the way out to the west. Um, and then Woods Drive also taking a look at that, giving you some cost numbers um, for that. And then one or both of those projects might be something that the LSA grant might cover. Thank you. All right, next item are the guide rails. Again, engineer has suggested that we prioritize Willing Fen Boulevard for this year. Engineer has given us an estimate of 30,500. Hickory Road and Bollinger Road can follow next year, and so I guess you're going to need a PA1 call for us. No, it's, it's, it's really not PA1. I mean, okay. we'll do a PA1 call, but what I'm going to initiate is um, getting getting the project qualified for liquid fuels, and then also, I believe we can solicit quotes for that. No, we have the public no, bid, but we won't have revealing wage rates for that. Because I think correct, 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 so. yes, correct. Yeah. Uh, can you can you buy guide rail on Pentage? Or uh, uh, on Coast or Coast that Coast 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 idea? Um, and that might be a valid way to go about it. Too. Right, because that, so, that doesn't have to be publicly bid. Right. I have the stars. So what I can do is um reach out to a couple of guide rail contractors, see if they are Coast stars approved, and if they are, I, I would assume we still need. Trying to solicit for at least three quotes and or, or you know, proposal by the way. No, if it's so if, if it's if it's if it's purchased through COSARS, it avoids public bidding through the county because it's already been publicly right. bid to the state. Right. But so if there's I always try to at least get three proposals, even under the COSARS, because they can vary to some degree. Okay. Um, so I'll work on getting that uh, in line. Then Thank first, you. then first. Finding out if we have some local guide rail companies, because there's three that I'm familiar with, and checking with them to see if they're good source uh, participants. Thank you very so, much. So, why, why don't you all the right to go ahead? To get something close for okay. guide, all right. guide I think that might have been the only one. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's wrap it up. Yeah. But, yeah, those stars are the good. I guess there's no more than repeating it, just in case we did it. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll make the motion to authorize Chuck okay. to uh, get us some quotes on guide rails for the Willing and Boulevard this year. Awesome. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. I really hope Peter doesn't want to see the answer. <laughs> And, and even though it's going through code stars, I'm also going to explore that we can utilize the fuels fund for that. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, don't, I think Val mentioned there might be some other funding for this, too. Um, I don't know. She said she was looking at something. I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's in here. Okay, um, thank you. All right. The next two items, the Bollinger Road fill overflow matter. I, I, I do have a brief update for the board on that matter during executive session. So, but I will say the board may take action on this matter after that executive session to authorize uh, SDE's preparation of a restoration plan with respect to Mr. Tom property. Okay. So we're going to leave this so we're going to We're going to do that after executive session. Yes. All right, the next item is equipment and equipment repair. There's nothing new this time. I've never seen that in the agenda before, but thank you. All right, well, I guess there is some new stuff there because on the next item it says new file estimate. Yeah. We are waiting on that. Oh, yeah. We're not going to go through it at this point because we have two years to Okay, okay. So, well, all right, so I'll mention because it's on the agenda. New file estimates uh, for EM Cuts Incorporated. There's a quote for the 97 International Jump Dump Truck Root Style Plow and Busting. Well, sounds so fancy. Um, Glen, Glen, Glen Hill, is that how you it? 42 by 12 inch straight blade for $17,682. EM Cuts quote for 45 inch standard mold board height with double canister springs. 
Let no 11 is do your jet stream plow with a side practice of $20,290. But we're going to hold up until fall 2024 and possibly look into grant funding. So there could be grant funding for an entire crop setup. Too. Okay. Yeah, so there's, we're holding off on that. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next item is the. Um, uh, we need some signs, no emergency, no parking, 12 of those at $36 a piece or $432 total. Dangerous intersection, two for $75 a piece or $150 total. Three uh, hundred foot distance from trucks, two of those at $88 a piece or $176 with a grand total of $758. I'm assuming you guys talked about this. I'm familiar with most of this. There was some uh, talk about signs, but okay. I think we need them. Yeah, we do need them. So I'll make the motion to approve the signs as above. The two, the snow emergency, no parking for 12 of those, uh, a total of $432. Dangerous intersection, two of those uh, for a total of $150. A 300 foot distance from trucks for a total of $176 with a grand total of $758. Motion. Do we need 12? Yes. Mainstream? It's not necessarily mainstream. It's for everything. Yeah. Even when right over six on each side. Motion, please. Roll call, Irene. All right. Jesse. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> signs go, go missing. Yes, we, we need the signs. Trust me. So um, if there's a snow emergency route and there's a snow emergency and there's availability to plow, you're going to stop. Is that a true statement and not just the white? That's way. your statement, so I don't know. I'm asking you. Is that so there were some issues with plowing to the curb this year um, because yeah. people didn't move their cars. What about blocks where cars were moved and it was not? Yeah, there, there was some of that. There was. Um, I didn't see it because oh. I'm not here. Uh, I didn't physically drive up and downtown. I do know some of the plow people were having issues with the cars not moved. There's another issue too about we we talked about trying to find a spot for people to move cars off Main Street, and we lost that property with the fire company now. So now there's no issue where. I, I was. I felt I, we there was a, also another idea of having people park in the park. And then I was worried about them getting stuck in the mud and crossing and falling in. So it, there's a lot of stuff yeah. to get around. It's a problem up on my road. Now, everyone usually pulls their cars off the street, so there's no one on the street, and they're still not on curb to curb. In defense, I'll say if you're 38 miles within this township, and with two guys come out, maybe three, it's a lot for, for two or three people to do. And they go out multiple times throughout the day. They're out there sometimes at 3 a.m. So I'm plow the road before you plow that. Right, right. So, Shoulder. so, so I, I guess in, in, okay. their, in their defense, I want to say they're doing the best job that they can with the equipment and the time that they have to. But if the residents of Wall Street the car is off the snow emergency road in Main Street, the expectation of those residents is that you are going to plow curve her. Yeah. And we're going we're going to work on that for the upcoming mm -hmm. snowstorms. We're going to show you. And what I have to do. Yeah. I there was a lot of cars not moving. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. There were there were a lot of cars and a lot of I think back and I'm on my way up to salt. And I personally went out there with my subcompact on my own time and cleared my whole section street. Oh, it's policy if cars are in. Well, we, 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 can't, we, can't, we, we can't, unfortunately, we don't have a slot. If you ticket in the toad, so. But we don't have a of course, about that, we don't tell BPD to come down and say, ticket every single car in Michi because they're not moved. There's quite a bit this year. But they, the police officers have better things to do during the snowstorm as well. We're not going to tie them up when they're responding to. So given the equipment that we have and, and the manpower that we have, it's something that we need to address. But for right now, I guess I have to say they're doing the best job that they can given the time frame and, and the equipment that they have. We all would like a perfect job done all the time, but sometimes we just have to accept that we're able to get out and get off the main strip and get to the, the larger road that we need to get to. I thought of the same thing. I drove home one night during one of these snowstorms where it started snowing like later in the day by nine o'clock the roads were covered. I knew I was in Marion once there was only a single lane open. Was I frustrated? Yes, but I was able to make it home. So, and my road too, it's not about curb to curb. My, my all my neighbors complain. I'm like, just deal with it. You know, I'm sorry, just deal with it, but yes. 
we'll have to have further discussion about that in the future. All right, thank you. Next item, the MTCA, this, this lease was edited by the MTCA and the supervisor really reviewed the changes and so Could you take a look at them? We, we looked at it. Yeah. We yep, you made the most of it. Excellent, because I took a look at it and have no problems. We don't need it. Is that the town hall? No, there's no motion to Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the two items I believe that were changed, the, the date of the lease agreement was changed to reflect the correct date because it was dated for 2023. The other thing was that the 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 time frame given to MTCA to move the trailer off the park was extended to 90 days rather than five. So those were the only two significant changes. The lease was already found by Don Height. I have no problems with those changes. No, either. Okay, and I don't think Peter had any op any op um um opposition. opposition. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can't get one without something. So I will motion to adopt the lease as edited by the MTCA. And I'll second. Rocco Ari. Aye. Jesse. Aye. All right. The next item we discussed the transfer of rental contract. Um. Okay. So, all right. I, I do just I want to I want to know to the people here that the the per bag option for low trash volume generators is not just specific to seniors. Any anyone can utilize that that program under the trash and recycling contract. Okay. It's, I I know there's been some questions about whether it only applies to seniors. Seniors get up like. Mr. DeGeneres said under the contract, 2.5% discount. But any anyone, any resident who gets trash service from Scaro has the ability to elect the per bag rate. Okay, when you if you elect the per bag rate, you're paying $40 for five bags, $8 per bag, you have to buy them in bottles of five. So you're paying $40 for do it's they sell labels. The residents provide their own bags. Okay, well, in that case, you're buying, you're buying labels. Can you set that up with the township? Or no, you would call them the truck. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but you buy, you buy the labels from the scaffold. Thank you. Yeah, they don't, we don't have them. That makes sense. We don't have them. Someone just made, well, they'll just take their trash someplace else. Wouldn't every household be filled? Yeah, yes, every. So if they took their trash someplace else, they'll still get a bill. Yeah, she's still getting a bill. Yep. Yeah. And for those of you that are thinking of burning your trash, you can't do it. Yeah, we recently had an incident within the township that someone decided to burn their trash, and uh, there were um, tires in that trash. And that is a huge violation, and that could easily have been fined ten thousand uh, dollars from the DEP. So do not burn your trash at all. Um, no, no, no. The only the only fires you're allowed to have are it's like a cooking fire outside the house. Yeah. So there's no burns of anything here in town that burn that already. Um, yeah. I do see that. Kind of yep, that's correct. So, so we have to follow the burn ordinance. Nope. Can't be burning that stuff. You could have an uh, outdoor fire for the purpose of cooking. Yep. So you, you see, there's we have we have our burn ordinance on the book. I think I think well, I think the board the burn ordinance is a little bit more expansive than you said. I remember yeah. last year when we the wildfires in Canada, you know, yeah. the smoke in this area. I think I think that the burn ordinance is a little bit more expansive. Um, it, it's online. Mm -hmm. It's online for for review. Rush. Um, you can have for cooking purposes, but you can't burn your trash. Yeah, you, can't, yeah. you can't. You can't. You can't like a hazard, hazard, anything that would you know pull the air, like a, like a tire or aluminum cans. But what's wrong? Yes, plates. Yeah. Yeah. And if you know you're going to be doing something like that, you should be calling into the office and letting them know you're going to be doing it. Because do you know if we require a burn permit? No. No, no permit. No. Yeah, is that something that you get up on the website? Is the burn ordinance? It is. It is. It is. Yeah, it is I have to review it myself. I apologize. I spoke about it. It's on prior to the day. So we're burning 10 o'clock. Right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a couple instances where people are burning things that they shouldn't be burning, and it's not a good thing to do. 
Yeah. All right, next item for discussion is Twilight Acres, 4110 Conrad Rivers Park Place. They currently use hands from the public and they do not have a dumpster. Um, can we send a letter to BP? Can you please inform me on this issue? Yeah, um, so we talked about it at the meeting and reports that they have cans, it's going to have to be in Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, um, so they can't contact right. the Also, there was also talk with, we make the, there was an issue where we had to have, when the, the rental place is going up, has to have a division for the dumpster to block it from sight. And when no. they don't have a dumpster over there anymore, so now they would need to put one up probably. So you mean the new storage facility? Yes. Okay, so the storage, like, okay, rewind a little bit here, you're confusing me. So they want to put a dumpster there. The yeah. Twilight Acres? No. no. Oh, the, 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 the storage facility? Correct. The okay. storage facility wants a dumpster there. Um, okay. And they had to follow, and I believe their, uh, the issue was, the code was they had to put a, a, a wind blockage. Right, the, the yeah. property maintenance code required the dumpster yeah. to be shielded. To be shielded, right. So now they have cans there that are not, from JP Mascara or Eagle, right? So they now that they have cans there, um they they, they have to be from JP Mascara. They can't be from um, their Republic, but they use Republic in the summertime sometimes for like dumpster. Okay, but now they have a dumpster there, so we should have to permit we have to make them put a, a block up too, right? Because it's not there. Oh, yes, so are you talking about twilight acres? Right. They they don't have a dumpster. They don't there. have a dumpster. No. And they but they, and they have Republic cans out there. But do they want to continue with the can service? So since I live aside of them, what I think they have been doing is in the wintertime, they have four cans out back. And in the summertime, they get a dumpster every summer. So you're asking, can we send a letter notifying them that our contracted... Um, so someone called in and wants to have a public. So you're saying, can we notify them that we have... We currently are contract with JP Mascaro. We, we need to. to put them on notice that they need to use JP Mascaro and not no longer can use it's the a property. residential property. No, it's a commercial okay. property. But I was told it's okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Correct? But our contract covers residences, not commercial not or industrial okay. properties. Okay. So it's up to them how they want to dispose of their trash. Okay. So they can do it where else it's can or not. Whatever. Yeah, but, but if they if they if they have a, a dumpster, that it, it needs to it, it needs to comply with yes. the property maintenance code because in the in the summer they usually go with dumpster. And if they're gonna if they're gonna if they're gonna put pad for the dumpster, then it may need stormwater. That's not gonna be probably not to trigger stormwater. And I, I doubt they put a dumpster in because they're obviously looking to to move the facility. And they, they do have fire so the wall, and and that was a particular yeah. Topic I mentioned to the architect that their plan did not show an area for a dumpster. Well, they, I, I can I, I can sure you they have one there. They're planning on it. When was that approved? It was not approved. They simply had zoning approved. They needed some relief from some setbacks. Okay. They got that. So a land development plan is pending. Oh. Well, then, well then, well then, the, the land development plan needs to show the location Correct. and screen for the dumpster. Correct. If that's what they want to be put. But at their board. current location now, where they're at now, if they want to put a dumpster in, yes, they would have to put screening around. If they want to continue to use cans with an independent hauler of some sort. They can, so long as it's it so long as it's consistent with our track limits. Oh, okay. 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 Because. Yeah, there's usually a dumpster there in the summer and the can turn. Well, if a dumpster's there, then it should be screened. Okay. It has to have okay. a right. screening requirement. Okay. Oh, because you, you mentioned there was a storage area. Yeah, the, the, the new storage facility is stuff for storage. Okay, that, that has a dumpster with screening shown on the approved land development plan. The owner last month asked to enlarge the size of that, and that was approved, and subsequently, I think the next day they contacted me. They wanted to move the dumpster pad outside of the screened in or the fenced in secure area. Mm -hmm. And the location they had shown was problematic for me because they wanted to put it beside uh, another building and it would have required the trash trucks to pull in and back out on Canal Road. All the while, the building was blocking a line of sight for the driver of the truck. So that was denied. Okay. And I have not heard back from them yet as to what their plan will be. Okay. So do you know our trash ordinance regulates a temporary dumpster? 
I believe it does not. I no, know sir. that they can use any color for a dumpster to complete our effective color. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. It, it, it does. It does. It does have about the question needs to help. <laughs> so I know that um, they own 85 Main Street, the old social hall, and they put eagle cans out, but they are not on the billing list. So they should be on the billing list for 85 Main Street, correct? Well, again, is, is that, that, that a residential, residential, residential home? Well, oh, the old fire. So, so, it's, so it's, not a, it's not a residence. It shouldn't be serviced by our contractor. They, they have eagle cans. <laughs> And had, had Eagle had Eagle taken? Yes. Okay, well then they did that without being paid. Okay. <laughs> wow. They also have a residential property there too. If they have a residential property, they 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 can and will be serviced by the Masaro okay. and will pay for it. But any again, any commercial industrial property will not have traffic up by Masaro. And I suspect they will be more confident in regulating this. <laughs> what, what would you be, you were going to send a letter to J.P. Mascara? No, we were sending a letter um, saying they had to use Mascara or no, they didn't sell because they're a business. I, I would simply, I, I, would, I would have the township send a letter politely advising the property and that to the extent they have a dumpster, even if it's temporary, it needs to be screened from public. Okay. Yeah. Like if anything, they have a dumpster out of it now. It's just no, but they will but if they, do, if they do install, yeah. Yeah. unless the traffic ordinance has some provision for temporary it dumpsters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What a dumpster is temporary. Yes. I'll make the motions to notify the owners of Twilight Acres that they need to have proper screening if they have a dumpster on their property, even if it's a temporary dump dumpster or a seasonal dumpster in accordance with our local ordinances. Sorry. Um, Thanks, Irene. Hi. Jesse. Hi. Sorry, Chuck was telling me something. Okay. That would be about old thing. I apologize. Is there, are we okay to move on then? Okay. Next item is the Brooks County Public Works Association meeting. Uh, this is April 11th at the Oli Fairgrounds in Oli. Uh, registration is open until April 1st. This is educational presentation with the vehicle walk programs and associated equipment and chemicals. Um, uh, we need to authorize who can attend, which would be road crew and emergency management coordinator. Um, so I'll make the motion to authorize road crew and the emergency management coordinator to attend this if they so choose. I'll second it. Uh, roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Next item is the polling place agreement, which is April 23rd and November 5th. The office will be used by election services for voting. The agreement needs to be filled out and returned by March 15th, which was already done. Uh, we just need to make the motion to ratify. I will make the motion to ratify the full in place agreements. I'll second that. Roll call, Amy. Aye. Jesse. Aye. All right. Next item is the pen dot mowing contract. This is contract number 3900395994, which expired on December 31st of 2023. Um, we need to fill out the resolution page and return it to renew for a three year contract that will expire on December 31st, 2026. Uh, this is Route 419, Christmas Village Road, and Silver Hawken Road. I will uh, make the motion to uh, um, fill out the resolution ratifying the contract number 3900395994. I'll second it. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. All right, next item is the dumpster exemption. Can you guys please clarify me on this? I'm a little bit confused. So years ago, when they first started to track heavy cycling, yeah. um, the secretaries mailed out with a newsletter a form to farmers and commercial properties um, 
the, the just what we were discussing the before. See, as a fruit that they have in those. Oh, if they get a dust or no, because we don't want them burning trash. No, okay. got it. All right, so you're asking for us to say we send out those letters to those businesses sending us proof of a dumpster at their locations. I think that's an excellent idea. We've had a lot of businesses change over the years. So. All right. So I'll make the motion for the secretaries to send out letters to the local businesses, verifying and showing some elements of proof that they do, in fact, have trash and, and dumpster services at their locations. I'll second that. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Ah, you know, this is about Adobe Acrobat. Okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, Adobe Acrobat Standard 2020. Owning this program is a one-time cost of $358.99 as more cost-efficient than paying for a yearly subscription of $156. Uh, two years of paid subscription would cover the cost of purchasing. It can be uploaded to all the computers. This will help to address PDF documents without having to rescan everything. Peter McCarthy is looking to tie his thing and solve I think all for gets a quote. Which they did get as close to have that paper. Um, like 1285, yes, 1285. Yes, we'll purchase the license, put it on the center of it. Yep. Things. Um, I mean, we as a office staff don't do that. And then as much as we use Adobe, it's not worth the money. We don't okay. use it that much. Okay, so you're not using it that much. Definitely will not solve it, but if Peter can come up with something like it's really cheap. So so it's not something that you need. No. Okay. And yeah. I, not, this time, not this time. And I think with working with solve IT, I think they're going to help us keep our computer usage and help us with best practices and what we we could be doing a little bit better. And that's what I'm hoping for. And we still have to talk about the Microsoft 360. You want to package and all that stuff that we haven't worked with. So, all right. Um, to John Ford, I think for the emergency management coordinating report, okay, I have nothing other than to mention that there was a local fire. There was some issues with that. Um, uh, and so he just wants, I, I guess, part of what he communicated with to me, the authority on what can and can't be burned comes from the the township and the ordinance, please do not take any advice from any outside agencies. Um, there, again, there was an instance where misinformation was given to this homeowner as to what could be burnt. And uh, John was polite enough, and although he looks intimidating, he's really a nice guy, went up to the property owner, initially started out as, as angry words, but then the property owner understood that this is his responsibility to be familiar with what can and can't be burned. So again, for the correct information, please call into the office as to what the is within the burn ordinance, what you can and can't burn. And I apologize if I misspoke earlier. Next item is the ARLE grant funding program through PENZOP. This is the approved the free application for grant funding for rover, guide rail signs, et cetera, with a maximum total of 3 million. I think this is what Val may have been talking about. Yes. Previously, I'm not familiar with this, are you? I, I did not get this. Okay, do you have anything about this, Lisa? Uh, I did scan it in there. I can try to. That's the, okay. That's okay. Right. It's, it's there. If you want, I can make it. That's okay. So it's it's basically a pre application to send it um, for us to send in a page of file. Okay. And Chuck, is that something you'd be able to take a look at too? Certainly, I'm not familiar with okay. what, what you know, is, is being. What you're going to include, okay. or what if, the amount is. If or... the guide rail and any rover could be included, that would be wonderful. Yeah, or any of the other yeah. road yeah. projects projects. We have numbers for now, so we can yeah. substantiate that. Absolutely. So I guess take a look that information over each other. That would be That'd wonderful. Be what need. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so we don't need some motion on that, correct? And then, all right. The next item is with sadness. Uh, Secretary Mrs. Fabi will be reducing her hours uh, to one to two days a week. Um, I'll make the motion to uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Um, uh, I'll sadly second. <laughs> Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jesse. Aye. 
In the same breath, then, uh, Secretary Susan Stabby will be changing her position to Assistant Secretary. I'll make that motion. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Aye. The next item is to redesignate Assistant Secretary Lisa Pagley, changing positions to Secretary. I'll make that motion. Roll we'll call Irene. Aye. Jesse. And again, a motion to change the, the designation of Assistant Secretary Valerie Bittner changed the position to Secretary. I'll motion to have Valerie Bittner change her position to Secretary. We're going. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Thank you, Sue. And I hope we could keep you here at least for a few days a week. Otherwise, I'll just be bothering you to take you out to lunch. <laughs> We still get on the, the main one. Yeah, she's, she's the oh, and she she's our go-to for everything. Yeah, you see how the question, how school it is, where it is, and when it is. So yeah, yeah. well, I, I guess having said that, it's it correct if I'm wrong, this is probably the first time in the history of Mary Township where you don't have someone who was born or raised in the township on the board and in the office. So mm -hmm. you know, that's not true. It, it's true. You've had other people like the entire board and the office staff not from this area. Yeah. Where, where? <laughs> but you have the members of the board that were from here that originally were born here and raised here. That's what I'm saying. So none of us were born and raised here. I, my children have been born here, but I personally wasn't. So I think this might be the first time. You know, and I think it's a wonderful board. We're, things have changed so much within the past couple of months. We're just moving along and, and we need to help. So, all right, last I know much about the secretaries and holidays. So are all three secretaries getting paid for all the holidays? I just plan on being asked to get paid for holidays. Yes. Yeah. Or vacation. Yeah. I'm eliminating my hours. I don't expect to be paid for it. I give a lot of time to this kind of yeah. that you guys don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's been plenty of times I have come in after I come home from work and I come here. She's here. It's 5 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock. Melissa was the same way in the summer. They never put her for this time. They didn't. All right. Next item. I'm going to move this way. So, for those of you who don't know, our water softener mm -hmm. just went kaput. Mm -hmm. um, I guess... Can we function without a water softener? We just wouldn't be able to use the the the, the water fountain. So do we need it for like washing our hands? Okay. So so here's what a water softener does. It essentially right. makes your water soft and strips the minerals out. Right. Um, right. And it also protects your pipes from getting eaten out by iron and other minerals in the water. Um so as long as there's a UV light, it would be safe to drink. But the pipes would be exposed to more corrosion um and the water wouldn't be soft now you're not bathing in it right right so we're flushing and washing our hands here right so yeah. i don't i i wouldn't replace the water softener because of the new building but it also depends on how far out that new building is going to be but then again we don't really need a water softener for the functioning of the, for the functioning of what's yeah. going on here mm -hmm. We just shut down the, the water fountain essentially. No, yeah. we're going to turn it on. We don't. It will just disintegrate. We are not going to touch any no. valves. So, so again, yeah, we're going to be putting we're going to be putting a water softener and spending essentially five thousand dollars right. for something that already has completely damaged pipes. Right. So we're really not going to do anything worse to these pipes by. The water salt. Yeah. Like, so, 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 I would say, you know, the day. Everybody can get a water. Sure. Uh, you drink the water, you know. No. Drink no. <laughs> the water to my own. Are you trying to boil the water for us again? You don't want it now. No, uh, uh, you just want to boil it. Right, right, right. right. Right, we had one call and, and I was not happy with it. Perfect. Okay. Well, right, the thing is, it, is well, how much stuff is broken in the past year? So you replace the past two to three years. How many things keep on happening with this still thing? It's getting more and more expensive. We're, we're chasing, you know, 
We're chasing down all these problems. Unfortunately, things haven't been maintained. So I love the, the mindset, Jesse. It's good. Let's hold up on water fluffing system for now. Keep up with the UV light. So there should be water in the kitchen. So if anyone wants water, the UV yeah. light needs to be serviced every eight months minimum. Yeah, yeah. And and they should have to take the glass and start out with that as well. Yeah. Um, because if water isn't being filtered out properly, what happens is is that glass um gets full of sediment and the light can kind of glass to treat water. Water. Oh, yeah. And I, I only know all this is because unfortunately Martin had lived my house when I came into this township and my water was polluted. And I had to redo the entire system myself and fix all their screw up. Uh, because uh, over here it's like five, six years ago, yes. I put another water filter in my house. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a couple of quotes. And it was quite a bit of difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, they're very expensive. Yeah, they're too expensive. Yeah. I, I we're, we're gonna hold off on that then. It's like as we up then if you're gonna be purchasing water for you guys to fix all this if we need to let you know we'll, we'll put it as part of the office expenses because we need to be able to have more like the water bottle. So, so if I could ask you, you guys, uh, ladies, 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 they're not done. If I could ask you and, and Val monitor what you need and let us know, and then we can come back to that issue. If we need to get a bottle and a service, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so we're going to hold off on that. Um, I'm going to go through the comments and then we'll go, we'll adjourn for executive session. Recess. Recess. That's for. Uh, executive session. Um, Peter's not here. Um, I don't have a police report. Do you have a police report? Um, uh, that was me, I can run in and get you the copy that was scanned. That would be fine. That would be fine. Um, uh, you know, I guess just to the LSA grant that we received, I would like to make. It, you um, go ahead, Kimberly. <laughs> um, this past Tuesday, we were awarded an amount on behalf of the 2023 Category 4 Works Program um, grants on behalf of completing the design for the low features. Um, so the amount was it just a thousand five hundred yeah, yeah just yeah. under seventy thousand dollars and I will have a more detailed breakdown but we believe it will cover the majority of the remaining design and upon the DEP's acceptance of the special study which approved the low pressure plan Heidi Chair proposes we will send very diligent budget updates to the township to inform you of exactly what that grant amount is going towards and projected um, amount left, or if we feel it won't cover the entire balance of design, including the construction bidding documents. I believe at this time, the construction bidding documents are going to be the potential outlier or overage of the grant amount. Okay. So it's a definite yes, but the funding did Yes. We are approved. Okay. Yes. On that note, then I need to go over to Fulton Bank and set up an account and put a thousand dollars into that account in order to receive those funds. Does that have to be amended to the agenda? Can you ask that one more time? So, in order to accept the grants, mm -hmm. we have to have a separate account at the bank, and I need to move over funds. It's it's a housekeeping measure, basically. So I need to have a motion on the table in order to- When will the funds be- dispersed? That is up to, you have to keep it close on the email. Okay. So when we submitted for this grant, we designated people to sign for it. Okay. And as you recall last year, yeah. there was a little bit of an issue. With this, is only, this is only administrative in nature. In nature, can, yes. Can, can, we wait, can we wait until- Yes, you can yes. absolutely, you should wait until okay. you sign that paper. You'll probably agree with your sign yes. the fund. There will be an agreement. That. Execute that at the same time. So those right those right. those matters can be on the agenda for next month meeting. Absolutely, and it really depends on when those emails. Okay. In that case, let's yeah. let's wait to put them on the agenda. So so we can make sure that we have the acceptance of LSA grant for next month. Mm -hmm. And in that same in that same 
we have top of the topic. We need to make sure that there's approval for um, opening up an account to receive those funds through Old Bank. And as a note, um, DCED is notorious for being delayed just because they have so many grants to administer prepare all that paperwork for. So it is great to have that on the agenda and be aware that they might take a couple of weeks to even get that paperwork out to you. That's fine. That's great. Thank, Thank you again, Phil. Thank, Thank you for putting in the work towards that grant opportunity too. Um, so I guess uh, going back a little bit earlier to what we were talking about, some of these special grants and stuff, when it comes to funding of the building, uh, Fulton Bank did discuss with me that there are some reduced rates for townships, and that I have to involve the solicitor in order to um, we be able to apply. But are you familiar with those at all, Colin? I'll forward the email that uh, the bank sent. Municipal financing? Exactly. No, not, no not uh, but yeah. we, we typically refer those types of matters to. Um, Specific bond okay. for financing council. So then, as as we get further along in this, because again, I, mean, I don't see the jump the gun, but we got excited over the opportunity to essentially have a building fully funded. Uh, but understanding that if we were to get only twenty five percent, it would have been roughly five hundred thousand dollars. Even given the current um rate of interest right now, that would come out to less than what we actually budget for our building repairs annually. So we knew that if we were to have received that amount, we would have been able to afford that mortgage with the current rates. But when the bank informed me of the ability to have a reduced rate, that was even like more, yeah, it, it was fantastic. So I guess when we um, get to that part, hopefully we'll both be around and uh, I'll be able to bring that up again. We'll be able to move forward and see what else we, how we could benefit. So thank you. Um, I guess, um, did you want to read the police report? I'll, I'll leave that for you then. Uh, I just want to say thank you to, to, to Kimberly and Joe for staying on top of everything for us. Like you guys are absolutely amazing, helping us out with all the grant work. I, I just, it just- And then also a collaboration with like Chuck. Oh yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah but, but everyone is just absolutely fantastic. Chuck, Colin, like you guys are amazing. I think we have a fantastic team. Um, I think, you know, welcoming again, Valerie and, and Lisa to the office. There's just, it, it always seems like there's more and more and more work to be done. And there's never enough hands. It, it seems like there's never enough time that you guys always put together for the meetings. And I appreciate it immensely. Sorry for my fumbling tonight. I'm just all foggy in my head. I'll uh, turn that over to Jesse then. Jesse's going to do the police report. All right. The uh, Topa Hawkman Township Police Department's monthly report. Uh, they patrol 721 miles. They work 60 hours. Their patrol hours were 32. There were a total of, yeah, total of six incidents. Um, there were two total complaints, six miscellaneous calls for service, one follow up, and one follow up call five total phone assignments, rental alarms were zero. EMS and fire advisories were 10. They had nine traffic stops. They had 14 citations um, given out. They had five traffic incidents, one security check, one motorist assistant, and one uh, three total court appearances this month. And that's all that's on the report. Do you have any further comments? I do not. Okay. Chuck, do you have any comments for this evening? Sorry, no. Colin? No. Lisa, anything? Um, just uh, set it ready and you know, if everybody can just sign up for that, that's the best way of getting the information out. Um, I would say you know, only a couple of people knew about it. I'm not sure what other forms of communication, communication um, the residents would like. Can I leave? Because uh, you know, yeah, the it's, it's, everything's on the website, we're sending out notifications. Yeah, I think it's tough for some people to realize like communication has changed a little bit. We have to do, I hate to say it was a little bit more affordable for us than sending out letters and mailing can get quite expensive. So yes. Um yes. the yard cell flyer that I am sending out during Georgetown, there is a paragraph on it about setting up. 
person. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Lisa, would we have any way of getting their flyer onto the website for the, the yard sale? Yeah, yes, you can do it. Yeah, I can okay. I can scan it okay. that up there. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we should have that would be very useful. Um and uh if there's a, the other line homeowners can use any pumper they want as long as they are registered with Terra Traffler. Yeah, and then we're looking for uh, letters of support for new building in this room. Yeah. And we do have a template available to anyone who wants to provide a letter of support for the sewer. Or if you'd like to write something, whether it's three lines or if you want to write, uh, you know, how this is possibly even negatively impacting you. If you want to drop that off at the office, whatever you can do, that would be very helpful for, for all of us. And yeah. there's, um, we have, I think there's probably stuff there. Yeah. Right. So, uh, what was the channel we're using? We're going to look for recess, recess the meeting for exactly. Okay. So we're going to recess the meeting for exactly a second. So I thank everyone for their time this evening. Yep. Yep. You can come back and tell us if you want to move around. I don't know how long it's going to take. Thank you. You might not want to do it. You might say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 